So this is Rocky and this is me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick selection. There we go. Notice the selection is pretty quick. It's, I'm gonna go ahead and now I can go ahead, now that I selected, I can go ahead and click the mask. You see, it says add layer to mask. Notice what happens when you add layer to mask. Notice everything disappears. It's still a mask. If I disable the layer mask, everything's come back. If I enable it, everything again disappears. Notice there are some areas I can select right here, right here, and right here, right? And I can go ahead and select this and I can say, subtract from selection, right? I can take my brush tool and masks work with black and white and a gradient. So black hides and white reveals. So if I take a mask and I wanna hide something, I'm gonna paint with black. Notice I'm, I have the area selected and now I'm painting with a black brush. Do you see what's happening? It's hiding it, almost like erasing it, right? This area between us, I'm going to go ahead and look at this, zoom into this area. And I'm going to use a selection tool. Let's see if I can, if, let's see if it'll do a selection. Perfect. And now I'm gonna modify the selection just a little bit. And now I'm gonna paint ov over it with black because I'm painting on the mask. Notice I have the mask selected, right? And there I painted on the mask. And I'm gonna do it right here as well. Upper hardness, let's make a really hard brush. And now we'll just paint right. And notice I'm not deleting, although it looks like I'm deleting, I am not deleting. I'm painting on the actual mask and I'm using the color black, which actually, the color black actually hides and the color white reveals. So there it is. Oh, there's another, uh, I, you know what? I'm just gonna crop the image because I don't like, the, I don't like the way, but there we go. When you crop the image, you actually do modify the image. But let me go ahead and disable the layer mask and you see everything comes back. You enable the layer mask, everything disappears. So when you mask, you actually, just like with pieces of paper, one over the other and it's hidden. So now, when you mask something, the layers below become hit, uh, 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 visible. Let me go ahead and create. Let me go ahead and create a new layer below. I'm going to go edit. Let's see, filter, render. I'm just gonna do black and white clouds, doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna do it because I wanna show you when you disable the layer mask, there's the layer mask, enable the layer mask, and you see what's below the layer, which is this layer one, which is this black and white clouds. So masking is nothing difficult. It's actually a part of, a part of selection. Watch this. Uh, let me go ahead and disable this. If you click on the mask or right click and say add mask to selection. And there's my selection again. It is that simple using a mask to go from selection to a mask to a selection, right? Deselect, right? So you can right click, add mask to selection and everything is selected. See that? 
What else can you do with a mask? Well, you can do other things with a mask. Let's disable this mask. Let's move the mask to a different layer, right? I just moved the mask to a different layer. Now I'm going to, let's see what I'm gonna do. I am going to use a gradient. Well, let's first see how that looks. Notice how that looks now. The mask is now applied to a different layer. See how that looks? Kind of cool, right? Uh, let's see what else could we do. Um, let's go ahead and do a gradient mask. I'm going to apply a mask. I have a white mask and a white mask means everything is shown. I'm going to apply a gradient to this mask. And the gradient masks works with black, white, and gray. So let's go ahead and do a gradient. Notice how the gradient went in. It's a mask. I didn't damage the photo. If I disable the layer mask, you can still see it. If I enable it, you get this gradient. Right? If I make a small gradient, you get a small gradient, right? How can masks be up oh, the control? How can masks actually be useful? Well, let's go ahead and look at, I'm going to go to, there's an image of a light pole. It's not a very good image, but I don't care, right? So let's go ahead and select this image real quick. It's not going to do a good selection, as you can see. So I, I have to go ahead and modify it just a tiny bit. Okay, so there's a selection of the light pole, right? And I'm going to go ahead and apply a mask. I'm going to invert it. And now I'm going to apply a mask. Notice everything disappears in the background and I just have this one mask. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new layer on the bottom. And I'm going to, I'm just going to use the black brush and I'm going to fill the actual light pole using a black color. There we go. Now we can see what the mask is doing. I have a, let me disable the mask. Notice we have the black light pole. Enable the mask. Now notice what's happening with the light pole. Now, what we're going to do is edit and do a free transform. What does it look like right now? Shadow. It looks like a shadow, exactly. Shadow. We just created a shadow using a mask and a gradient. Okay. So if we want if we want to change it a little bit more, we can go ahead and go back to our gradient, use our gradient tool, and make it a little darker. Oops, from the top to the bottom. Right? And we can also modify it by using the opacity on the actual layer. You see how it fades in? And there we have a gradient. And we have a shadow that we just created using a mask. Now, you can't really get this type of detail. And I'm talking about this detail right here where it fades into the background without using a mask. But notice how our mask looks. 
See that white and gradient to black. Remember, black hides, and that's how we use masks to select them, to actually create shadows. How else can we use a mask? Well, let's go find a new image. So now we have a brand new image that we're gonna play with. Now I'm gonna use a different form of masking. I'm gonna use something called a quick mask. Notice this little thing right underneath my color palette. There's a little icon called a quick mask. When you click it, notice the layer becomes red. Now, I can zoom in and I can do a quick, notice the red color. That is my mask. I'm actually painting, I'm actually painting with a brush. Notice I'm just painting over the image. Do you see that? And just like with painting, I can subtract and I can add, right? But right now I'm just gonna paint. I'm doing pretty good with having a mouse. <laughs> Notice I switched to white and I'm deleting the red. You see that? I switch to white and that gets rid of the red because white, black hides, white reveals. Switch it again by hitting X and now notice the color switch to black and now my red is coming back. See that? Notice I'm painting with a mask. I'm actually creating a mask using my brush and painting with black color. And I'm not doing a very good job. I'm just doing a quick job, right? Let me go ahead and switch to white and clean it up a little bit, right? Switch it again. Let's go ahead and actually apply the mask. Apply the selection first by clicking on this, on the, on the bottom says we're in the quick mask. Notice everything is selected. And now apply the mask, invert it. And this is what I selected. This is, I used a quick select mask to select the actual pole. Now, because the actual picture is still there, I'm able to reveal some of the mask, right? If I start painting inside here, look, I'm revealing some of the internals. Do you guys see that? It'll be hidden again. And that's all done with masking. If I disable the layer mask, the whole picture comes back. It's the same concept as we learned in one of the chapters where we actually selected something and we actually cut it or cropped it to a new layer. Now we don't have to crop it to a new layer. We can just mask it on the same layer. It's a powerful tool. Now let me show you something that the book is not gonna really show you. This right here, we talked about masks. Now let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. There is my tree. It's not a very good image. You can see how pixelated it is. It's not the best image, but what if you wanna change the background sky? Look at all this blue. Let's say we wanna make it red sky, right? 
look at all this. You have to select all of the blue in here. Can you see how tedious the process can be? You got to get rid of all this blue out of the tree in order to select the sky. How difficult is that in this image? Let's go ahead and do something called a channel mask. We're going to mask it using a channel. How do we do that? We go to channels. The trick to channel masks is this. You choose the channel that gives you the most contrast. Channels are all black and white. There is no colors in channels. They represent color, but it's all done in black and white. Let's look at red. Notice we want to we want to get rid of the blue sky, but notice the sky is gray. Notice the tree has a lot of gray in it. Red is not a good color for this image. Let's go ahead and try green color. Again, green, look at the tree and look at the sky. The two colors blend too much. There's too much similarity between this gray and the tree gray. So we can't use this color. Let's try blue. Ah, white and dark. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for that contrast. Now, let's go ahead and make a copy of this blue color. Because if we mess with these colors, we're going to modify and we're going to change the image. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate the channel. We're going to select blue. Now we've selected the blue, blue copy. Now we're going to go to town. Do not use the adjustments panel over here. You have the curves, you have the levels. Don't use this adjustment panel. Go to image and go to adjustments. And let's adjust the levels. Now, what are we trying to do here? We want to make the sky as white as possible and the tree as black as possible. That is our objectives. Let's go ahead. Yes. Ah, look at the sky. It's, it's turning gray. We don't want gray sky. We want it as white as possible and the tree to be as black as possible. Do you see that? Click OK. There's a channel mask. You see that red indicates a channel mask. And then say selection. There's the selection. And now let's go ahead and apply the mask. Oops, that's not the right mask. I'm going to invert it. And there's the mask. All the blue sky is gone. Is it not? All of it is gone. Now look at all of this problems we have down below. Click on the mask, get your brush out. Where's my brush? There's my brush tool. I'm on the mask, black hides, white reveals. So let's go ahead and paint with white. I'm talking about all of this. See what I'm, I'm revealing? See that? Oops, too much. I'm getting some of the sky. So let's go ahead and try this again. I don't want to reveal the sky. So there we go. Just that. Go back in here and go edit free transform and pull this down a little bit more. There we go. And now we have all of this red sky shining through the tree. See that? Now we can refine the mask. 
select the mask. Now we can do a little bit of transparency here. We can do a little bit of work. Let's go ahead and overlay. What I'm trying to do now is look at some of this radius one pixel I'm trying to get rid of this blue in the mask. There we go. Now how's my tree looking? Minus that blue. Do you see all of that? Look how it looks. The red sky is actually, you can see it through the tree and it looks real, right? And I just took two different images and put them together. Imagine selecting all of these little areas, all of these little pockets by hand. That will take you a year. And this is called a channel mask. The book talks about a channel mask, but they don't show you how to use it. Go out there, play with channels and masks. If you have questions, look at some of my videos. If you still have questions, email me and I'll set up a Zoom session because this is an important chapter and it is going to be on your midterm that's coming up soon. Any questions?